The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Filled with the Holy Spirit, Jesus left the Jordan and was led by the Spirit through the wilderness, being tempted there by the devil for forty days. During that time he ate nothing, and at the end he was hungry. Then the devil said to him, If you are the Son of God, tell this stone to turn into a loaf. But Jesus replied, Scripture says, Man does not live on bread alone. Then leading him to a height, the devil showed him in a moment of time all the kingdoms of the world, and said to him, I will give you all this power and the glory of these kingdoms, for it has been committed to me, and I give it to anyone I choose. Worship me then, and it shall all be yours. But Jesus answered him, Scripture says, You must worship the Lord your God, and serve him alone. Then he led him to Jerusalem, and made him stand on the parapet of the temple. If you are the Son of God, he said to him, throw yourself down here, for Scripture says, he will put his angels in charge of you to guard you, and again, they will hold you up on their hands in case you hurt your foot against a stone. But Jesus answered him, it has been said, you must not put the Lord your God to the test. Having exhausted all these ways of tempting him, the devil left him to return at the appointed time. The Gospel of the Lord. Did you notice that the order of the temptations that Luke gives us is slightly different from the order of the perhaps more familiar text from Matthew's Gospel. Matthew ends with the temptation to fall down and worship Jesus, and in doing so he would give him all power and authority throughout the world. But Luke has uh, the, the last temptation, is to take Jesus to Jerusalem, to the temple, and throw himself off there. And this is important because Luke has a great focus on the temple and Jerusalem. We think about the beginning of Luke's Gospel, we have Jesus presented in the temple, then he's lost and found in the temple. And then the whole of his public ministry is really seen as a sort of pilgrimage towards Jerusalem. So that's the focus there of Jesus' life. That's why um, he puts that as the last of the three temptations. And this was a very important uh, <clears throat> temptation because it was really a kind of showpiece. The devil was trying to say, well, you just sort of do some kind of circus piece and everyone will believe in you. If you imagine uh, the temple in Jerusalem, not only was it very tall itself and the pinnacle was on the very top, but it was built on Mount Zion in Jerusalem and underneath was the Kedron Valley. So in throwing himself off, he wouldn't just be throwing, throwing himself off from a height like the top of our church, but it was much, much bigger height. And it was the centre of the city, so everybody would have seen it. So they would have said, gosh, look at that, yes. And the angels would have stopped Jesus from being crushed on the ground. And, well, he wouldn't have been necessary to have the charge of blasphemy against Jesus. Everybody would have believed in him, and it would have been very easy. He could have taken the easy way out in following the devil's temptation. But he said, no. No, my course is to do the will of my Father, which is to be crucified. And I'm not going to force people to believe in me by doing some kind of cheap stunt. The last uh, of Matthew's temptations, the middle one from St. Luke, um, was that Jesus uh, should fall down and worship him. Of course, this was terribly abhorrent, but the temptation must have been, really, well, I'll give you what you want. What you want is everybody to worship you, everybody to recognize you as the king, to have authority and dominion over the whole world. It will be your world. That's what you want. Oh, it's very tempting. But of course, it was by using the wrong means. 
Sometimes we can have the same temptation to do something that looks good, the outcome looks very good, but it's using the wrong means. So we can't use the whatever the means they are to justify a good end. One of the, the other sort of dissimilarities between Matthew and Luke's accounts of Jesus' temptations are the words that um, they use to describe how Jesus is driven into the desert. In Matthew, he uses a very strong word that the Holy Spirit drove Jesus into the temptation. It's a very sort of forceful idea, a very forceful word. Luke uses the word to lead, which is, is ago in Greek, um, and is much more gentle, which is characteristic of Luke's gospel. But the most significant point is that Luke also uses exactly the same word, ago, to lead, or to lead up, agago, um, for the devil. So the devil, he's using the same word, leading Jesus up the high mountain to see the whole world, leads him up onto the temple to tempt him there. And the Holy Spirit also led him into the, into the wilderness to be tempted. So perhaps there, St. Luke is trying to draw our attention to this tension that we all have between, on the one hand, the Holy Spirit, God's grace, trying to lead us into goodness, to holiness, and on the other hand, the, the, the tension of the devil who's trying to tempt us. And there's this kind of dialectic or battle in, within each one of us, as well as within Jesus, of the two, Holy Spirit and the devil, trying to fight really for our salvation or our damnation. The devil uses the tactics that apply for each one of us, for the best of each one of us. He's quite sort of experienced, as you might say. And so for Jesus, he doesn't look, of course, like this um, evil image with horns and red and a forked tail and so on. He can make, be, make himself very appealing. So for Jesus, he used the temptations of justifying his temptations with scripture. And that would be really eating at the heart of Jesus because the scripture was the word of God, word of life for him as it should be for us. And the same with us. He knows um, how we might be weak, the best way to tempt us. So instead of looking evil and all that kind of stuff, he rather tries to persuade us, well, it's naughty but nice. Or, well, everybody else does it, so why shouldn't I? Or, well, you've got to have some pet kind of sin. You don't have to be perfect. And he uses these subtle ways of trying to tempt us. And sometimes, particularly if, if we've, we've stopped, or we've given in resisting the temptations of the devil, we might not even notice that these are temptations from him. So in this gospel passage today that we've listened to, we've reminded that just as Jesus was tempted, um, subtly perhaps, but to do some terrible things uh, by the devil, so we too are tempted ourselves. And in this period of Lent, by our fasting, like Jesus, and our prayer, so our penance and prayer, um, we're, in, we're given the grace of God to try to recognize and overcome the temptations of the devil.